So last summer, summer of 2019, um, anxiety was something I I dealt with like my whole life uh, through college and everything. Um, and so I met Lindsay, um, 2015, 2016. Oh, it was 2015 when yeah, I started. So we worked together. Um, <clears throat> I had met her and we had grown closer through the years. Um, and I took on a full time position with where I was working. Um, and so we were like in the same position and everything. And we were working together, uh, getting closer. And then so last summer, summer 2019, um, Like it was anxiety like I'd never seen before. You know, it was just like panic attacks came out of nowhere. Never really dealt with that in my whole life. Like anxiety, yeah. You know, now that I think back on it and kind of understand kind of what a panic attack is and feels like, I've had a few of them maybe in my whole life. But, oh, man, last summer was just, you know, as as I'd mentioned with you last week when we were kind of talking and, you know, I'd gotten to the point where, you know, I'd finished school. I jumped into a job. I jumped into a master's program. You know, I was checking all the boxes to, I guess the American dream you could say. Right. Yeah. Um, That's right. And I just, you know, I kept going, right. I was just working, just working, come home, you know, do some stuff, go to bed, you know, wake up, repeat. Right. And it just, it finally got to me, you know, it was just, I, I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't doing things that were, you know, beneficial to my overall health. Right. You know, I wasn't necessarily eating right. I wasn't, you know, really cautious of like routine or sleeping or anything like that. I was just kind of winging it, you know, I was just going with it. Um, and so I really started to see the effects of that. And Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, we could talk about too, like we can talk about what it was like for me. Right. And then, cause Lindsay's had them before too. So we could talk about what it was like for her, but then more specifically, we can also talk about what it was like for her to see me at work and see me going through that. Right. We'd be got, you know, we began to get closer and closer as coworkers and she could really sense that something was off. Right. You know, oh, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm great. You know, it was just like you can tell that there was something going on. Right. And something was affecting me. Um, so internally, I just noticed. So the summer months for our job at the university, it kind of starts to pick up with. So we worked at the university in, in Flagstaff. Um, and the summer months are when, um, you know, the incoming freshmen for the new coming class are coming to orientation. We're doing a bunch of stuff over summer, trying to get everything wrapped up from the previous year. We're also getting things ready for the fall, right? In the fall, typically about July, August, September are like our busiest months of the entire year, right? So that's kind of work, right? And so I kind of came into the summer, you know, really just... I was in some tough classes with my master's program. And so it was taking up a lot of my time outside of work and then in work, it was just busier. Right. And so I found myself just kind of rolling with the punches. Right. And just not really being conscious of what I'm doing. Right. I'm just trying to do so many different things. And it felt like I just wasn't taking, like, I couldn't even like take a moment to collect my thoughts or gather my focus. Right. And I was like, she, you know, and, and she'll test to this, right. I think she started to notice, you know, I mean, I was dropping the ball with some things, right. In just terms of my overall quality with phone calls and, you know, emails and interactions, right. It's just like, I'm a social butterfly, right. I'll talk to her like a bush, right. And I'll have those conversations. Right. But then it started to get to the point where it was just like, you know, I was like freezing up and like internally, you know, my heart was racing constantly in these instances, right? Through these phone calls at work, these stressful situations, um, whether we're dealing with students on the phone. Yeah. 
my heart's racing and then I'm starting to think about it. Okay. What's going on? Like, what could this be? Right. And then it's kind of just this panicky, like anxious and, and like on edge type feeling right in the middle of trying to focus on the person that's in front of me. Right. I'm they're coming to see me. I'm trying to help them. Right. But like mentally I'm not there. Like I was checked, you know, I was compartmentalizing all these areas of my life and just not present. Right. And so that's when I started to really notice it internally. Um, That'll do it. Oh, geez. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um so like as you can probably tell Austin talks a lot, right? And so for we love that. We love that about Austin. It's so it's one of our favorite things, right? It makes the podcast interesting. Um, but with that, like he just, it, it felt like he was shutting down and like, that's not typical behavior for him. And I'm really in tune, like tip, I'm, I'm usually really in tune with like the people around me and how they are feeling. Like if somebody is like having a bad day, I can notice it from across the room for whatever reason, that's like my superpower or whatever. And so like, I was noticing, like being friends with Austin, I noticed pretty quickly that something wasn't right, but I didn't want to say anything because like, I don't know what's going on at home. I don't want to like bring it up. I don't want to make it like a weird thing, but the longer it continued, I started to be like, Hey, this is like, not something you're just like having a bad week. You bounce back from, it was like day after day after day. And it started to get worse and worse. And so I sat down with him and I was like, Hey man, like what's going on? Like, let's talk about it. Like, what can I do to help you through all of that and so that's kind of when our our conversation started when we started having like the talks about like everything that I've been through and how I handled my anxiety and my stress and stuff like that so I feel like it, it was probably like a month. It was several times a day. Like it was, and this was something I'd never had before. So I didn't really know how to like, like handle it. Right. Like trying to be able to explain everything that was going on in my mind, everything that was like bothering me and, and all of this stuff. Right. Like there was just, you know, school work, you know, my relationship, right? We just gotten a dog a couple months before that, right? Like all these different areas of my life, I was trying to keep, you know, I guess that homeostasis, right? I'm trying to keep a well balance between all of my lives. I was like here, I was there, I was here, I was there in all these areas of my life. And so probably, yeah. So I'd say June into July, July was really when it like hit you know, and I was like, well, what, you know, and the funny thing was, is actually in May of last year, like I kind of started to notice before it was like really setting in, I kind of started to notice, hey, like I, something feels off or whatever. I'm going to try and see if I can get an appointment in with the counselors on campus. They have like an employee wellness there. Right. And so I had reached out, tried to get an appointment. They're like, Oh, it's going to be about eight weeks or so for the wait list before you hear back. And at that time it wasn't too serious. Right. But then as I, you know, got into June, into July, it really started to hit. And so I think it was around that time. I mean, towards the, towards the middle to end of June, I mean, Lindsay and I, well, well, we just started. I don't necessarily think anything shifted. I think it's just as we began to get closer, you know, I started to open up a little bit more about kind of what I was going through with the panic attacks and not really knowing. Um, And so her and I, I mean, it started with just going 
and getting um, some coffee or tea at, at just one of these local coffee shops in Flagstaff. Um, yeah, and I mean, we, mm -hmm. yeah, like we'd get off work, right? And then we'd just go and chat, you know, for like two and a half hours. Yeah, like hours at a time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. Um, yeah, so my journey with anxiety has been a little bit longer than Austin's. Um, I, like, throughout high school, I was relatively fine. Um, my junior year, I was taking, like, a lot of, like, AP classes and stuff. That's really the only thing I could really take. That's all my, it was a college preparatory school, so that's all I could, all I had. Um, so, like, I was taking all these AP classes. I finally reached, like, a breaking point, like, halfway through my junior year, had, like, a huge mental breakdown, um, like, <laughs> kind of fell off that, that, like, cliff then, but then I was, like, fine after that. Like, I figured it out, you know, kind of worked through it and everything, and I was fine throughout college for the most part like normal anxiety stuff like new situations stuff like that that's normal and then um in 2014 my mom passed away um unexpectedly it was just like she was there one day and gone the next and so that really like is what started all of that really for everything so um it's for me it's been like since 2014 I've just kind of been and everything that happened after that as a result is just like I've been trying to get back to a normal state of existence since then but um that's really when when my anxiety started in in intensely I guess is when she passed away um and so a lot of those like the I think it's the loss of control I guess is what I started seeing in Austin is and that's like that was like a huge thing for me is like that's like you can't control that like you know here one day gone the next you can't you have no control over that whatsoever and so that's kind of what I started seeing with Austin is that he it really felt like he was like it felt like he was falling down a cliff and he just kept grasping at like straws to try to hold on to and trying to like, you know, put his attention here to shift it away from this other thing that's not going so well. And then he'd shift it back to the thing that wasn't going so well. And this other area over here would stop doing so well. So it was, that's, he kind of, it kind of felt like he was chasing problems around um, and losing control of things that way. And that's what I started noticing. I think they do. I think in large part they do. I mean, I obviously I can't speak for what Austin's panic attacks are like, but like just the feeling of like, I think for a lot of people, it is that loss of control, right? Like you, you, for some reason, like you've checked out from whatever's happening around you. You kind of mentioned that a little bit ago where you said like, you felt like you weren't engaged with the conversations. You weren't present in that moment. And I think a lot of like that anxiety is you're you're trying to solve a problem that is not currently in front of you and so I think a lot of that for people is that's how everything that's how anxiety manifests is like you're you're trying to solve problems that you're not currently facing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, disassociation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to ground yourself somehow. Yeah, that's how that's how my anxiety manifests. So that's how I like, I, for some reason, for me, it's like, somebody is el somebody else is driving my body is living my life. And I'm just in the back seat, just like hanging out, freaking out. <laughs> and that's, and that's how like a lot of my anxiety feels is like, I'm, I'm a third person perspective watching somebody else live my life. Um, yeah. Barely hanging on like. Yeah. I mean, definitely like the heart racing and then 
Like, mine was more so like. Kind of, I mean, for me, I mean, the underlying reason might, may have been, you know, like cognitive or because obviously anxiety is in your head, right? And so it's, well, so, so when I started to feel off, right, my heart would start to race. I'd start to think, you know, in that moment where let's say I'm, I'm, having this conversation with you at work or whatever right in my mind I'm thinking well like my heart's racing this then I guess it was just kind of I, I started to get consumed by fear in those moments right when I started to notice that something was wrong it's like I lost all confidence in my abilities at work right so I was panicking right I was sitting there like, you know my heart's racing and stuff trying to keep up with work again like I said it was busy it was crazy right and so in those moments I knew now was a bad time to have whatever it was that I was about to go through right and so that in itself right it's like well what happens right now you know my heart's racing or whatever you know kind of getting that lightheaded type feeling right like what happens if I just pass out right now right or you know things like that where it's like the what ifs consuming myself with these fearful thoughts right like and I'm in the middle of work right then it's drawing a lot of attention on me right here's what would happen if that were to happen right all of these people you know and then you start kind of just getting caught up in this idea and it's it's you know and that's that thing right you you said earlier when that happened to you last week you're like well nobody really could notice right I think in I guess I I mean personally I think anxiety in a whole right nobody ever is going to notice what's going on, right? Nobody's knowing, nobody's in your mind, you know, hearing what you're thinking, seeing what you're thinking, right? And so for me to be going, do you think I'm having a normal conversation right now, right? You know, in that instance where I'm meeting with somebody in person or even on the phone with them because we work at the call center, right? For me to be thinking all these thoughts and everything and trying to maintain that while I'm, you know, dealing with customers and students and such, right? They have no idea what's going on. So I, you know, that was a whole other side of it, right? Trying to put on a face, like everything's okay, right? But in the mean, you know, I'm over here sitting and trying to collect all these thoughts and stuff in my head. And so what I really mean when it's, it's in your head, right? It just, well, what if this happens? You know, it's like the what ifs, these fearful thoughts and such, right? And then. <clears throat> with how anxiety is, it does some, you know, wild tricks to your body, right? When, and I'm sure if you ask Drew about this, right, he can attest to it, right? Those anxious thoughts, the heart, the heart, the heart palpitations and such like that, like, right, if you think like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to Google these symptoms really quick. I don't think, you know, I've dealt with anxiety before, you know, I think I'm fine, right? And you Google like, you know, shortness of breath and heart palpitations and lightheaded, right? It's going to tell you, you're, you know, you're, you're probably in cardiac arrest. Having a heart attack. Yeah, you're having a stroke, right? And so all of these type of things, and I think that the biggest piece, right? You know, and I think <clears throat> this is where her and I agree and even Drew too, right? That high, you know, that hypochondria type feeling where you're like, oh, Dr. Google says, I'm about to drop dead. I have a, you know, I'm having a stroke, mm -hmm. right? So it's more so of like that type of stuff all going in my head when my heart was fluttering in this conversation with somebody at work, right? And so all these things, and so your body actually trick it tricks you into thinking. So if you think, oh, like, you know, the symptoms, having some pain in my left arm, right? Or, you know, shortness of breath, like you'll start to kind of, you're like, oh, like I actually, you know, I, I feel that, right? Like, and you're trying to check in the box off of like mm -hmm. all these things, right? And so, um, I mean, I would, I mean, the body definitely does play tricks on you that, mm -hmm. that way. Well, that's the whole thing with like when you're, <clears throat> when you're emotionally hijacked, right? There's the whole, there's the whole thing where you're not thinking with like your frontal lobe, you're thinking with your animal brain. Um, there's actually somebody in our off that, in, in our office that explains it really well. She calls it flipping your lid. And so basically like this is your animal brain and this is your like frontal lobe. And when you're emotionally hijacked, you flip your lid. Right. And so now you're just thinking with this part of your brain. And so like, this is your animal brain, your animal brain is fight, flight, or freeze. And like, that's all that you can think about in that moment is how like everything is going wrong and you have no logical like nothing to ground you anymore. And so really like what I've found for me is really trying to bring that 
back and close that lid and try to say like, okay, well, what are the rational reasons why I may be feeling this way? So to Austin's point, like, what are the rational reasons why I, my heart is beating so fast, right? So you had a lot of caffeine, that right there probably is what happened. You were just doing a lot of exercises. That's probably adds to that somehow. But when you're in that heightened emotional state, you're not thinking with any kind of rational thought. You're just thinking like something is chasing me and I'm either going to fight, flight or freeze. Right. And so you have to like bring it back down. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to do. It's something it's, I, for me, it's been, be, it's been part of like mindfulness techniques and learning like to just like when I'm feeling like that, to take a step back and to, and to pause, right? Like I'm, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to take a second and I'm going to evaluate the situation, right? I'm going to pause and evaluate. And so that's really been for me, what's really helped me is like when I'm feeling this way where I'm, there's no longer any kind of rational thought. There's some kind of like thing that I've been able to do where something is still in control. One of these is still in control. And so I've been able to like say, okay, I'm going to pause and say, okay, is this rational behavior? Nobody's chasing me. Nothing. I'm not in actual danger. Right. So we're going to, we're going to think rationally about this and close my lid and we're going to find some kind of logic to this situation now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of times where I'm, where I'm like that, like, I don't know why. And there, there have been times where it's just like, I feel like sometimes I have residual feelings from things like things that maybe I haven't dealt with in the past or just kind of choosing that inopportune moment to bubble up to the surface. Um, and so like, I kind of think about like, is it a certain time of the year? Like, is it around like one of those traumaversaries as a lot of people call them? Um, and just kind of like really trying to rationalize it and like whatever you can kind of come up with to rationalize it. It doesn't even have to be the right answer, but just whatever you can do to rationalize it in that moment can really help to bring everything back into focus. At least for me, that's like my, been my personal experience with that. <clears throat> well, so it's interesting. I mean, when she's talking about that, right? Like when I was at my worst, like I was, my amygdala was hijacked, right? My lid was flipped, you know, in those moments I was, I was freezing, right? I was freezing, I was freezing. And then in those moments when I noticed it, I was like, oh, well, I gotta, I gotta leave, you know? And I started this idea of like escaping the situation, right? Escaping whatever it was, where I was, so I can go try and feel better, right? Whether that's, you know, going to the bathroom, getting a sip of water, you know, getting up and walking away or things like that, right? And it, then I was like, okay, well, that's not working, right? And I was trying all these things, you know, I was trying to be mindful, trying to really, like, I never really did much of meditation and such. And so when Lindsay and I started to meet, she was telling me these things of how she grounds herself and really tries to, you know, stay in the present, right? When I was at that, like, when my senses were heightened, it was so hard for me to be able to do that. And when Lindsay's mm -hmm. like, okay, just, you know, sit still, close your eyes, you know, try not to think of anything, you know, it was like the hardest thing for me to do is because that idea of like compartmentalizing everything, I got all this stuff going on my brain, hard for me to turn it off, you know, and then it was just impatience, right, I'm like, okay, all right, it's not working, like, you know, we got to try something else, right, it's just like, mm -hmm. I wasn't giving myself enough time, and, you know, now looking back on it, right, like it, I can totally see why I wasn't right. Like it, it, it just, I was so just. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, exactly. And that, and, but I think the biggest reason too, kind of how you guys were talking about, I think my biggest, I think barrier to that was I was figuring out why is this happening to me? If I can figure out the why this is going to stop, it's going to cut it out. I won't deal with this anymore. But what I've learned, it doesn't matter if it's a meeting that's causing you stress. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, a relationship issue, financial issue, or whatever it is that may be, you know, trauma versary, like she said, right? It's a matter of, okay, you know, here's how I'm feeling. It's because of this. What can I do to help myself feel better, right? It doesn't matter about the why. You know, what can I do? You know, and so in the, it brings back that conversation, right, Jared? You you know you you drank the caffeine, you did a lot of exercise, you, you know you amped up your your adrenaline's going, right? So by all means, yeah, your body just said let's keep going, dude. We're going a mile a minute, right? And so for me, I started noticing things, right? Well, okay, caffeine that didn't, you know, I was I was pounding a couple cups a day in, mm-hmm. in college, right? Never really had issues with it, right? But then through all this this season of my life, I was like, well caffeine's a stimulant and then my heart does not need anything to stimulate that thing and keep it pumping faster right like and so you know things like that taking that away right kind of started noticing you know the effects that had on my body in a positive way you know where now when my my heart starts to fluctuate right it's like oh you know let's get all anxious about this right if i'm jacked on caffeine and you know like you said lack and sleep and things like that right it's much harder for me to kind of, you know, let's take a deep breath and stop. It's like I physically couldn't stop, right? Mm-hmm. And so, okay, well, what can I do to fi- no, not fix that, but what can I do to take care of myself better or possibly avoid that, right? Yeah, so no mm-hmm. caffeine, right? Getting, Making sure you get the eight hours of sleep or whatever it is for you, right? Making sure you're getting those right that way when the anxiety was creeping back up right that way when things started to get like that you kind of had you know you're not you're not running on empty for lack of a better term right you're like okay well you know let's reassess this right yeah Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's for both of us too now. Right. Like she would tell me, okay, let's try what I do. Here's what I do. Right. Pick five things in the room and do this. And I'm like, okay, you know, there's the wall, there's this, some type of my. So the, the picking the five things in the room is a grounding exercise. So you like it it kind of pulls you into the present, right? So if you think like, if you're, if you're going a hundred miles a minute inside your head and you're thinking about things that have happened like in the past or in the future, like all this stuff, you're not thinking about what's presently in front of you. And so picking five things in the room is where you ground yourself by looking at, okay, well, I'm going to pick five things in this room that I can physically see. And I'm going to try to memorize things about them. Right. So like sitting here, I can see Austin's dish with all of his, his cooking utensils pencils in it. So I'm going to look at that spatula and I'm going to say, okay, that's a brown wooden spatula and it's sitting right in front of an orange spatula. And so I'm really like, it's, it's so dumb. Like saying it out loud is so dumb, but when you're like, it really helps to like focus in on something and it brings you back to the present and you say like, okay, well, this is a tangible object in front of me. It's not the stress of next week. It's not the stress of the past. It's what's happening right here in this physical moment. Mm-hmm. it's one it's kind of like a it's kind of like one of those um it's like a you take like a 
like an inventory kind of where you do like the inventory of how your how your body's feeling so you kind of like start you sit there and you kind of start with your feet like how do my feet feel in my shoes how do my how do my feet feel in my socks like how you know just kind of re it's refocusing your animal brain to f- focus on something else. Cause that's what we can do, right? Like I can say like, Oh, I know how my thumb feels right now. If I think about it, I can move my awareness to like how my thumb feels. That's like one of the crazy things that your brain can do for some reason. And so that's really what it is. It's just redirecting that energy somewhere else. And that was the hardest thing for me to do. Lindsay's like, okay, let's, you know, put your feet on the mm-hmm. floor. How are your feet feeling? How are your thumb? And I'm like, Lindsay, I don't care how my feet are feeling, right? My heart's racing. Yeah, it sounds super I feel dumb like I moment. can't <laughs> breathe. Like, what am I, why am I going to focus on my extremities mm-hmm. when I'm trying to just get some oxygen in, right? You got to start, you can't breathe, you're dead, right? And so that's where my mind was, right? Like, it, mm-hmm. so she's trying to do these exercises with me when I was just, my, my senses were heightened. Dude, it was just, you know, she was like, yeah, you just, you know, you take these thoughts and everything, you, you mm-hmm. picture it as a river just flowing by, right? You have logs in the river, these anxious thoughts, you're just letting them go by. Oh, I'm I like, tried Look. so many different things you're like, with him. I was and like I'm sitting here like thing after thing at him. And I was like, so how did, so how does this work? Right? Like I see all these things racing a mile a minute. Right. And I mean, I have the attention span of a goldfish, <laughs> so that didn't help. Right. And so I was sitting here that idea of like, okay, like, let me try and imagine this, right? And like, you know, even to this day, right? Now that I'm a lot better with those types of things, like it's still kind of hard for me to do, right? But in the, through that, right? I had to start somewhere, right? And so I started with the meditation, right? I started, you know, with some some stuff like that where I was just, and I think the biggest piece too, I was, I was putting so much pressure on myself to be like her where she's at with her anxiety. And she's like, yeah, I can just sit down. I can calm my heart rate and this, that, the other. Right. And so when I'm trying to meditate, she's like, okay, let's just take, you know, 30 seconds. Right. I'm like, I'm trying, well, you know, I gotta, I gotta sit still for an hour. Right. I gotta, you know, just sit here. Right. And I can't even sit still for like 30 seconds. Right. And so putting all this pressure on myself. Right. But in all actuality, with her, you know, what she was, she was good at showing me, right. Is like, you gotta start somewhere, maybe steps, you know, let's do, let's do 30 seconds today. Let's do 45 seconds tomorrow. Right. What seems like 15 seconds is just, you know, half a breath in -hmm. today's world. Right. I mean, that just made the, that made all the difference for me. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just starting where I was and just improving as much as I could each day, doing what I could do in that day, not worrying about where I should be, where Mm -hmm. I think I should be, where I think I want to be, say, hey, let's ju-, and that's kind of that idea, right? Just focusing on the mm-hmm. present, right? I'm not stressing next week. I got a big meeting. You know, I don't know how it's going to go, right? Who cares? That's seven days from now, right? Like, let's mm-hmm. just take some time, right? And just focus on the now. So, well, that's more mindfulness, right? And that was the whole biggest thing, too. She was like, okay, well, mindfulness and meditation. I'm like, what's the difference? I thought they're the same, right? And it's just, I learned kind of through therapy, right? Like, my my therapist kind of had put them, like, here's mindfulness, here's meditation, so that, you know, you kind of jump back and forth um, between the two. And so what I started, because um, I've been, I've been a, a Christian all my life, and so my religion and my relationship uh, like with my family and just, you know, like God and, and like, that's been something that's like always been like, you know, my, my grounding and, and that. So um, I found there's a meditation app that it's, it's called abide. And so it's like a, it's like a Christian based meditation where it's almost like a prayer. Right. And so I spent a lot of more time, you know, a lot of time with those types of, of prayers. And um, so it was like, you know, they have like two minute ones where it's like, you know, just kind of, you know, close your eyes, take a deep breath, you know, and it's kind of like uh, kind of walking you through like a guided prayer, right, as you're, you know, falling down for the night and, and closing up shop for the day, right, and so more so of those, you know, and so I think my biggest piece with meditation, you know, is like prayer and really spending a lot of time in that and through that I've done the, you know, started journaling and doing that, incorporating that in my morning routine. And so I think that was another biggest piece too, is like, I put all this pressure. I'm like, Oh, well, Lindsay's meditating like this. So I, you know, let me try this. Right. It's, it's not going to work for me. Like it works Mm -hmm. for her. Right. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of the biggest things that I was trying really hard to kind of teach Austin and show him is like, it doesn't matter where I'm at because it's not your journey is not my journey. My journey is my own and your journey is yours. And wherever you start is where you're going to start, whether you start today, whether you start tomorrow, that is your beginning. And however long it takes you to get to the end doesn't really matter because we're never really at the end, right? We're not at the end until they put the nails in our coffin, right? And so at least that's like, for me, I think like I'm still learning about mindfulness and meditation and figuring out things that like things that work for me years ago don't work now because I'm not the same person that I was before. And so like trying to tell Austin, like, you know, these are the things that work for me. These are the other the other tools that I know of that other that have helped other people, you just have to pick one, stick with it for a while. If you're finding that it doesn't work for you, pick something else, pick a different thing. Um, and really like have a kindness for yourself and say like, I am exactly where I need to be. And any forward progress is forward progress, right? Whether you're only able to meditate for 30 seconds a day, or you're only able to be mindful for 30 seconds a day, that's 30 seconds that you weren't mindful yesterday. And that's still progress. And so it doesn't have to be, I think a lot of people get lost in the idea that like, oh, I need to meditate for an hour in order for, you know, this to be effective. But that's not the case. It takes years to get up to be able to do that. And so we kind of have this idea in our heads a lot of the time, I think, where we want to be at that finish line. We don't care about the in-between, like I'm starting here and I want to be here and I don't really care about what happens in the beginning, in the middle. But the middle part is the important part. That's where all like the growth happens. That's where the journey is. And so really kind of trying to show him like, you know, start with 30 seconds a day. A big thing for him was like, he was getting anxious coming to work. And I said, make your goal in the morning, just getting up and getting dressed for work. Don't think about going to work, just get up and get dressed for it. If you can make it that far, then just and if you don't feel like coming into work, then call out. Like you need to take time for yourself, right? And so then the next day you say, okay, well, maybe I called out yesterday. I've gotten up and I've gotten dressed today. Now I'm going to go into work. I don't care what happens for the rest of the day. I don't care what I have to do for the rest of the day. These are the two items that I'm going to do today and that's it. And whatever else I do on top of that is just icing on the cake, right? And so you just kind of build. And so a lot of that was just teaching him like where his own individual building blocks were and how to build on top of that, like building the foundation and then going from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i got more important things to worry <laughs> about than this this brown but could be tan it's kind of stained and i'm over here <laughs> sitting like okay squirrel let's rain it back in right like I was like, Lindsay, you're not understanding what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Fix this heart issue <laughs> that I've contracted, right? You know, and so, yeah. You're all of a sudden heart defect that you've just spontaneously yeah, I've, spawned I've, overnight. Yeah, I've diagnosed on myself <laughs> and gave myself... Yeah, I've got... That's Lindsay, right. look, I have six months to live, right? We're going to just... <laughs> just I, I need you to focus on me right now, right? Like, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, like I said, like, I've dealt with anxiety all my life, but I've also, you know, been a Christian all my life. And 
So kind of just taking it down to that level. Like, I, I mean, I similar to like figuring out why this was happening to me. I was like, you know, God, what did I, what did I do to deserve this? Like, why, why did you put this on me? Right. Did I, you know, did I not do something right or whatever? And now I'm being punished. Right. And so through all that, you know, I spent a lot of time, you know, kind of working on my relationship with God and, you know, learning about that and learning about myself through that. And, you know, basically just the biggest thing that I'd learned during that time, right. Is there's, you know, there's trials, there's things you got to go through. Right so that you're more prepared for something down the road, right? You know, you had to go through some tough patches so that, you know, when, when, well, so what I, I mean, this is a great pivoting point into where we are today, right? Like through all that, right? Through my time really being intentional with prayer and focusing on that and, you know, like I kept, you know, I kept hearing, you know, like I felt like God was kind of speaking to me and nudging me and like, he's like, you know, don't worry, your breakthrough's coming, right? Your breakthrough's coming, your breakthrough's coming. And I'm like, what, what is that going to be? Can I get like a timestamp, right? Can I get like a two to four week range, right? I'm the type of person I'm like, okay, when, right? And so that's, that's part of that impatience type thing, right? But it was like, don't worry, it's coming, right? Don't worry, it's coming. And I'm like, well, if you can make it quick, right? I'm I'm struggling here, right? Got the six months to live, right? I need you to, you know, really come in and, you know, and so through that, right, I just kept hearing that, right? And I pressed into that, you know, and, and just kept trusting him, right? And, and doing these things, the morning routine, you know, I mean, I'll speak to that forever, right? That's just revolutionized my, like with what Lindsay was saying, right? Just focus on the morning, right? When you get up, you get dressed, right? I was really being intentional with, just writing it all down, right up what I was worried about, right? Things like that and getting it all in, you know, through a prayer journal type thing. And then through all that, that breakthrough, right? Through all this and these two and a half hour conversations we were having, we finally got to the point where like, why don't we just start a podcast? Mm -hmm. And from there, we were just like, okay, what does that look like? Right. And the next day she was looking up soundboards on Amazon, right? Things like that, where we're just like, why mm -hmm. not? Right. Let's, let's, let's press into that. See? And so that, that to me, that was my breakthrough, right? Being able to go through that. Right. And then here we come October 1st of this year will be a year since we launched our first episode. And so we really started pressing into the idea of the podcast probably end of July, August of last year. Right. It's yeah. so really like, well, this is crappy what I'm going through. Right. I have, you know, kind of like a, religious side in terms of how I deal with it, right? She's got an entirely different way of how she deals with it. How can we meet in the middle? How can we show my experience, her experience, similar symptoms, similar symptoms, right? Similar things that we dealt with, but we, we kind of handle them in, in two different ways, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, let's talk about that, right? Let's turn these two and a half hour conversations. Why not, you know, record them and help other people? <laughs> uh it's 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 the disconnect yeah mm -hmm. the whole yeah, the whole it. nine yards uh, we actually just recently got approved on amazon music for amazon podcast so that's fun that's new um but yeah mm -hmm. yeah you can follow us everywhere Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At what cost, right?
Mm-hmm. Well, and when you, so that idea, so the reason we called it, we were like, okay, a podcast, what the hell are we going to call it? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, all these different names and stuff. And so, so we came up with the disconnect. So, you know, I dealt with anxiety my whole life. Right. And she dealt with it her whole life. My worst, like my, my, <laughs> you know, breaking point, right? It was summer 2019. Her was through, you know, hers was through the span of a couple of years. But what we both realized, right? We're like, why? Like, why was I, why? Like, what happened? Why is this happening to me? What did I do wrong? Me, me, me. I, you know, what did I do? Right? And then this idea of anxiety, it disconnects you from who you truly are, right? Mm-hmm. It makes you think that there's something wrong with you and that you're stuck with it forever, but in all actuality, it disconnects you from who you truly are, mm-hmm. and it kind of lead, you know leads you down that path of oh yeah you're not good enough or you know don't go here you know it's just like that whole idea of getting just just mm-hmm. batted down by fear right and so we were just like well all right let's call it the disconnect mm-hmm. right? it just kind of grew from there right we just kept yep. kept going with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. I mean, you always said honestly, anywhere. So yeah, the biggest. So the best way to find us is Googling Frank Disconnect Podcast. That'll pull up your iTunes, your Google Play, your YouTube, our website, right? We have across all these different platforms a way to listen for it, right? We just finished up season one. So there's about, you know, 17 episodes there. Right now we're kind of, you know, brainstorming and and planning and doing a bunch of cool things to get um, set up and ready for season two Mm -hmm. um, to, to get that going. You know, now that we've, like we said, August, October 1st is going to be a year. Okay. So what, you know, where are we at now? What, you know, kind of doing some planning there. Right. So definitely, you know, I'd say the main point, right. Visit our website. It has all the links to every single, you know, Spotify, YouTube, you name it, right. It's all there. So mm-hmm. frankdisconnect.com. That's going to be yep. the, the best way. All to of contact. our, all of our social media handles are Frank disconnect. So you can find us at Frank disconnect, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. 